See, well, with us on the line uh, is Mayor George Flags from Vicksburg. Uh, Mr. Mayor, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Lucius. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How is uh, how's Vicksburg? Uh, Vicksburg is great. I see you in a different road. I, uh, hey, you, that's right. That's right. I've, I've been you know to- back in my. In my old role as chairman of the party, I kept trying to get you to to switch parties. You want to you want to make some news this morning? Well, I'm still leaning. I, hey, well, let's keep talking about it. Uh, uh, you know, you, tell me about I, how, to, tell me what you saw on Tuesday. I mean, you you've been around politics uh, for a very long time. You're a you're a great politician and understand it. I mean, what, how do you think Tuesday shook out in Mississippi? I'm not surprised. Uh, I saw nothing different. Uh, other than the fact that uh, I think uh, that that 47 percent wall is still there for statewide Democrats, one, two, uh, uh, Brandon ran a great race, uh, and I thought that he's been committed. He did all 82 counties. He raised the money that a Democrat had been questioning about if you had the money, if you could raise the money, could you win? I, uh, it has been proven that money does not win uh, in this state like that. Uh, it's a 47 percent wall. But what it, when I look at the numbers of 2019, uh, Tate versus Hood, I think there was about uh, 45,000 more people voted in that race than voted the other day, and uh, uh, 82,000 more people. And uh, Hood. Uh, Tate beat Hood by 45,000. He beat um, Brandon by 36,000. Uh, but the percentage is still the same. The uh, percentages in the Hood race were 51.9, and, and yesterday was, or day before yesterday, was 51.6. So it tells me this, uh, uh, Lucian, you've been chairman of the party, and I've, and I've said this before. Republican has got to get serious about. Uh, uh, inclusiveness of blacks if they want to uh, strengthen this party. Uh, it is clear to me that Republicans uh, can vote for a Democrat because they did it in the transportation race. If you look at Willis Simmons' race, uh, they voted uh, in that race for Willis Simmons. Because uh, when you look at the difference between Willis Simmons and uh, Stamps, even though Stamps was winning, uh, there was about a uh, 400 some different in the vote. So that tells me that, that that they can and will vote for the right candidate. Willis Simmons was the type of candidate that ran uh, a race based on himself, not the party, and what he has done to be effective as transportation commission. Uh, I think Andrew Copperham uh, did a great job on helping uh, take in those areas where people don't believe, but it did in Madison, Rankin, and in Soda County. Uh, I think she did a good job on that. Uh, I I, I, I agree with you. Com- I agree with you completely. And, and this is something I talked about when I was when I was chairman. You and I talked about it, and I talked about it uh, both to the committee and and at outreach events and at other events. I think that's the single most important thing the Mississippi Republican Party has to do is build is build more inroads in the African American community here, both because it's good for the state. I mean, I don't think it's good to have a party that's almost exclusively black and a party that's almost exclusively white, but just pure politics. If if Republicans ever were to get up to twenty percent of the African American vote, you can forget about a Democrat ever getting elected statewide. Well, uh, there's some truth to that, but at the same time, I think the Republicans got to get serious and got to come up with a plan of action to uh, be inclusive. And and it's not just on policy, it's on public perception. Uh, Just like they call on Angela to endorse Tate, they got to start doing endorsement of black candidates themselves. Uh, It works both ways, because when you look down ticket, uh, blacks are voting for Republicans. In the state, I said that in the Magnolia Tribune uh, when they was talking about the Louisiana race. If you look at Delbert Holzman's race, uh, he got black votes. Uh, you look at Lynn Fitz's race, she got black votes, and even Chad White got black votes. So what we got to do is uh, be more serious about uh, including uh, blacks uh, in the Republican Party, and at the same time, the Democrats got to be more serious about including more white and white males 
are in there. But, I, but I'm telling you, uh, what I see out there is a silent black boat, a black boat of uh, white uh, millennials. They are voting for the person and not necessarily the party. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and, and we're starting, I mean, Donald Trump did great work there, uh, increased our share of the, the black vote in 2020. Um, and there, But there's a lot more work that we need to do, um, both in Mississippi and, and elsewhere. And we've had some uh, some some success. Uh, I believe there's an African-American uh, supervisor uh, was elected as a Democrat who switched in North Mississippi, uh, thanks to a lot of activists, including uh, Faye Dillard's work um, and you know Rodney Hall getting elected in DeSoto County uh, and and some other spots. But you're right, there's a there is a lot of a, a lot of work that still needs to be done. And I tell you a test. I, I tell you a, a, a test. A test is that Republicans have elected a black. Uh, Republican in the House of Representatives uh, for the first time. And what we have to do is work with him, elevate him, and show that what we want to do is not be so much uh, about uh, race, but uh, but to elevate uh, people in the party and give young people the opportunity. And I think what that does, it gives you a better state. But I'm telling you uh, that the 47% wall uh, for Democrat, but at the same time, there's a 52% wall for Republican. Uh, when you look at the governor's number, I'm not talking about down ticket. I'm talking about the governor because the governor raised produced more numbers than anything down ticket. So that let us know when you look at the comparison between the governor's race and the lieutenant governor's race. Uh, I think the lieutenant governor got more black votes than the governor. I think all the down ticket races, uh, the Republican candidate got more of the black vote than the governor did. But some of that has to be just because the, the down ticket candidates, all of whom, the ones I met all seem like very nice people, but none of them were sitting on $12 million and had, you know, the, the sort of war chest that Brandon Presley did. Well, but it, 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 it goes to show you where there's a diminishing return in money. Uh, as a clear example, uh, with Brandon, he had the money the money that everybody is questioning about it. But I can tell you this, as it relates to the uh, media uh, exposure, uh, I think Brandon had it. I think Brandon worked his butt off. Uh, he did a great job. I can't take nothing from him. But at the same time, you cannot run this state based off on the national policy in the state. Uh, uh, let's take an issue, abortion. Uh, abortion did not help uh, Brandon uh, at all. But when you go to Virginia, uh, it wiped out the Virginia legislature uh, based upon abortion. Ohio passed a abortion bill, so it, abortion wasn't an issue. It wasn't a litmus test. It, it, it was about simple, if you're a Republican, uh, uh, that they'll vote for you. And the other thing, I'm just going to be quite honest with you, Lucia, uh, I think Donald Trump came out and solidified he did. I don't think he did anything different in terms of he. Just, what he did is solidify and gave a Tate Reed campaign credibility as relates to conservatism. I, you're a hundred percent right. I, I think that endorsement made a big difference in making sure people showed up because turnout was always the question. And I mean, it's a question in any race, right? Making sure your people get out and vote. And I think Donald Trump coming out and endorsing. Governor Reeves uh, certainly helped make sure that the conservatives all stuck together and, and, and showed up. And I think it made clear, you know, that was the challenge, I think, the whole race, to make sure this was a race that was perceived by voters correctly to be a vote between the conservative candidate and the not conservative candidate. I, I think Donald Trump helped a lot there. Because Donald Trump is still strong whether you want to or not in this state and, and in fact, on the national state. Uh, he leading Biden in all the... Uh, the, the the key state, if you want to call it now, uh, I don't know if it's going to hold, but he's doing that. He's still popular among uh, the Republican Party. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he sent a very clear, I mean, it, it, that endorsement sent a clear message, I think, to Republicans that they really did need to show up and make sure they voted on, on Tuesday. Hey, look, man, we're coming, up on a, we're coming up on a break. You got time to stick with us a little bit longer? Oh, absolutely. I'm here till the cows come home. 
Come on, I'm for it. Y'all, this is Lucian Smith in for Paul Gallo here on the Gallo Radio Show on Super Talk Mississippi. Stick with us for more with Mayor George Flagg, DIC. Well, if you want to be part of the conversation this morning, uh, a great conversation we're having with Mayor George Flaggs, uh, send us a text at the C Spire text line, 601-879-4395. Well, Mayor, we were talking about uh, before the break the need for Republicans to really uh, build on, reach out to, uh, expand uh, their their uh, reach inside the the black community, in particular, in Mississippi. And my sense, and I'd be curious to know your thoughts. And I, I I harped on this when I was on the RNC, the need for us to do this, that we tend to do outreach in the party by showing up six weeks before an election, doing one event, and sending one mail piece, and we go, look, we reached out, didn't work. That this needs to be something that is sustained year round, not just a few weeks before election time, show up at a, a, a majority African American event and think that we're going to start really making inroads. Lucia, you said it best uh, yourself, and I think that if you follow that script, I think you'll be successful. But at the same time, if Democrats will reach out more to a uh, white uh, male, uh, because they're, they're reaching some of the females, but they got to reach out more well. Uh, but what got to galvanize all of this, what, what creates the coalition, I believe, is the policy themselves. Uh, I think that when you start talking about crime, education, health care, infrastructure, and tourism, uh, th- those are kitchen table issues. And I mm-hmm. think that what what one of the things that Tate did, and he did very effective with the Angela Cockerham uh, commercial, he had Angela to admit that they was different, admit they had a different of opinion, and she disagreed with him, but on education, but on infrastructure, but uh, she agreed with him. And, and, and that was bingo. Uh, that's what resonates. I think what black folks want in this day and time is to be able to follow the money and be able to deliver the money back home. And so right. if, the, if, the, if the legislature show uh legislators uh in the black caucus uh in the conservative caucus and the republican caucus they can work together by uh creating equity in the budget process and the expenditures of the dollars uh then i think uh, we're gonna get there what we want is a better state just like we came together uh, to remove the flag that's what you gotta have those issues and, and, and guess what that was not an issue in the election of uh, nowhere. If it had been Chris uh, McDaniel would have been your lieutenant governor. That was, that was really one of the most interesting things this cycle is when the flag got changed, people thought they were, I mean, I, I remember uh, after I made my statement uh, calling for changing the flag, hearing from a lot of people who said, you're going to cost the Republican Party a lot of uh, a, a lot of elected officials over that, and the ones who'd come out for changing it, you know, they're going to get beat. And you really, I don't, with the exception maybe of Nick Bain, I don't know that there was a single person in the legislature or statewide office who suffered any political consequences there. And you're right, and I commend you, uh, Lucia, because you and I had many conversations about why it was important uh, to change the flag, why it was important to create some economic prosperity and remove those barriers that the flag presented to us. And and you went out and you did that. And I commend you for that. Uh, well, you and, and and the speaker gun and those type of people. But leadership starts by leading by example. And the only thing I'm saying to the Republican Party, uh, one is that you have an opportunity to work with one of your own blacks within your own party in the legislature. That's one. Two, to Democratic and Black caucus members, this is your opportunity to put real substance on the table and stop fighting and being emotional because uh, when you become emotional, your intellect go out the one. Yeah. Let me let me shift for a second because t- there were a lot of interesting things on Tuesday. I mean, I, I'm, I'm like you. I expected Governor Reeves to win. But I, I also expected Brandon Presley to get more votes, especially in majority African American areas, than Jim Hood did four years ago. Because Hood, you know, Hood had a primary. He had some, uh, some. He didn't have an early endorsement from Congressman Thompson. Um, he, he he had a primary uh, running against 
uh, African American candidates. Brandon had none of that. I mean, he he had unanimous support of the party immediately. Congressman Thompson endorsed him immediately. He had more money uh, than you know more money than I think any Democrats ever had. But he he still ended up getting about thirty thousand fewer votes this time than Jim Hood did four years ago. What what happened there? That money uh, hit the wall. I'm telling you, uh, it has been said that the Demo- National Party didn't support uh, Mississippi when it comes to the financial obligation to uh, the party at the state level. Brandon did all 82 counties. Brandon talked to every black group that I know of. Brandon did a, did everything he needed to do. But if you hit the wall and you keep hitting the wall, you're going to keep hitting the wall. What you have to yeah. do is stop hitting the wall and create a door and walk through. That door is that door of opportunity, and that is where you have to address Mississippi issues based upon Mississippi talk and not the national talk. Yeah, and we you're right to, about we, Brandon. We to, right. And, and, and I give Brandon credit for that. But I never thought that Brandon could win this election with a 47%. It has been proven. It has been proven ever since Tate Reed and uh, Gary Anderson raised. Uh, Gary exceeded that, uh, that, that wall. But ever since then, it's been solid. That Haley Barber and Musgrove raised, that wall is solid. And that is because of the fact that uh, I think this state uh, represent or will vote a Republican. They'll hold a no and vote Republican against a Democrat uh, any day, regardless of how uh, you stand on issue. But I say this now. I think the government used Angel Cockerham very effectively, but he can't just use her for a campaign uh, plot. He cannot just use her for the opportunity to get elected. He must continue to work with people like Angela Copperham. She's an independent. She's a very good and smart intellectual person. I've worked with her. She has a lot of credibility, has a lot of integrity. And and, and, and the caucus are going to have to work with uh, not only the black Republican guy, but Angela Copperham and get some things done. It is not who go into the church. It's who come out the church. There we go. I agree with you about about Angela. She she is she's great. I mean, I, and I don't agree with her on a lot of things, but she is not one of these people who I think even when she was still a, a Democrat, um, or maybe she is still a Democrat, but even even um, she, she's always she been one of those people. She, did she go independent? She's independent. She and I talked about it, and I think she had made the commitment. And let me say this too, now. I'm not going to be surprised if more blacks uh go independent because i think what what most folks want i keep telling you they want red meat and they want it not just on thanksgiving and christmas they want it 365 days a year yeah you're right well she's great even when she was still uh caucusing with the democrats she, she you know she was willing she wasn't one of these people who was unwilling to work across the aisle when there were op- where there were things we agreed on that would be beneficial to to her constituents, but she also, you know, she's not a pushover. She's not afraid to tell you, you know, she ain't going to work with you on that, or, or she thinks you're wrong, or she's going to fight you on it. Well, I'm giving you commercials. She was a George Flag prototype. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, she She's great. But but it, I just was, I was shocked that we didn't see, uh, that Brandon didn't hit the hood numbers with that, that amount of money, and I hear what you're saying about that percentage, but it, you just... You know, I think the assumptions about going to a runoff always sort of assumed that that he would under that Tate wouldn't do as well as he did, and they ran a great campaign. But so did Brandon. You just sort of thought he'd he'd hit the hood numbers. Well, let me just tell you this: I said it from the door. I said it when they said Tate was eleven points up, that that was going to be a four to five uh, percent race. Uh, you can go and uh, Frank Corey uh, did a story where I said it, and I said it about the wall, and I still say it. Yeah, it, it has to be a depressing morning for Democrats because you had in Brandon the best candidate they've had in 20 years, more money than they've had in 20 years, and to still come up exactly where they were four years ago with, with even fewer votes. It's not a not a great time to be a, a, a statewide Democrat right now. Well, I'll tell you a smart thing for the Democrats to do. 
and that is uh, select or elect Brandon Presser as the Democratic Party chair so he can stay uh, on the face of every newspaper. That's not a bad idea. You got time for one more segment, Mayor? Oh, absolutely. I'm here to stay. Hey, my man. Y'all, this is Lucian Smith uh, in for Paul Gallo here on the Gallo Radio Show on Super Talk Mississippi. Stick with us for more. We've uh, still got Mayor George Flags on with us. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, for sticking with us for the whole hour. It makes for great radio. Uh, great. It makes it great for me, too. It so, keeps me uh, out. Jimmy from Monticello wants to know what what's the what's the river look like over there right now with uh, with this drought? Unfortunately, it looks uh, lower than it ever been uh, in my lifetime, and but I think we're beginning to um, uh, weather uh, one way traffic. Uh, it is hurting our commercial use of the river, but at the same time, uh, if God don't give us some rain, there's nothing we can do but just weather. Yeah. Going back to the Democratic Party, that's an interesting idea. I mean, what if you were if you were still a member of the Democratic Party, if you were advising uh, the Democratic Party, what what where where do they go from here? Well, I think what they have to do is restructure, and the restructure means rebrand, and the brand has got to be uh, a white male on the face of that party, and I think that that white male face ought to be branded. Because Brennan has gotten you forty-seven uh, percent of the vote, and what as Democrats, what they do, I, I think they they that what they do and they do wrong, and that is that when they get a white male uh, or female up, um, and with that uh, statewide recognition, they remove them from the ballot. They don't run no more. You got to have a Democrat that. Uh, Run again. I think that if if Brandon runs again, uh, he's gonna he he's gonna stand a better chance. I think he can break that wall. Uh, if in fact Republican, uh, uh, not I mean the Republican not do any better than making their party more inclusive. Now he's he's within uh, thirty six thousand votes. You, okay. What do you think? Uh, I mean, do you think Brandon? I don't. I don't see him disappearing. I mean, you you think he'll run again for governor or some off some other office in the future? I don't know, but you got to understand this too. Now uh, he was running against the incumbent, uh, a party uh, guy that that has wholeheartedly stuck with Trump, and the next uh, candidate will probably be more open. And the issues. Of the republic gonna be more moderate next time so he won't have to reiterate that he's pro-life and that he's not for uh a boy being a girl or a girl being a boy and those kind of issues those issues were not an issue in mississippi other than the fact uh that tate was able to pin it on him. whether you believe it or not there wasn't a whole lot of fact checking uh, uh, Tate pinned him uh, to the point that he could not exceed 47% because Tate ran the wall. He didn't run uh, any other campaign other than the wall, and he stepped outside with a more moderate uh, platform when it comes to education. Education is something that, that, that Ray Charles believes in. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this what what is the future for for george flags i've had quite a few people on the ceasefire text line say uh, how well you would have done if you'd been a candidate for governor this cycle well i'm going to continue to analyze the number uh but at the same time i'm not stupid i want to be where the number uh uh favors me uh in the terms of getting a lot more crossover vote uh I'm not so sure that if I ran statewide uh, that I run as a Democrat or Republican this time because I'm an independent. Uh, right. Of course, you can't run two races at the same time. So right now I'm, I'm gearing up to run for re-elect or mayor of the city of Vicksburg because I have some issues on the table that we need to complete. We have to complete the M-City, which is a, a, a technology transformation center, and we have to get that port. And then because of that, I want to be able to work with the state leaders and the uh, federal leader to do that and i think uh i'm in a position to do that and i encourage anybody black or white republican or democrat work within 
the guidelines of getting money to your district. Well, you do a great job over there. I, I hope you'll I, I hope you'll run unopposed this time. Make it make it easier for everybody. Man, I pray. Well, if you if you decide you want to switch uh, switch parties, George, we we can get. I bet we could get Frank Bordeaux down there this afternoon. You tell us you tell us where you want it to happen. We take you. Well, Frank Frank Bordeaux is already here because he's providing us with our insurance. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. And, he, and he's, he's a good guy. But at the same time, uh, Lucy, let me just say something. I just think that uh, if I do uh, consider anything in the future, uh, it has to be mathematically possible, and the metric needs to be on my side, and I need to run my own race and not the party race. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Well, George, thank you for being with us. We've had uh, George Flags, the mayor of Vicksburg, uh, on with us for the last hour. This is Lucian Smith in for Paul Gallo here on the Gallo Radio Show on Super Talk Mississippi. Coming up next is Fox News followed by Super Talk Mississippi.